Among other things, your presentation and your work is uh, involved with skyways and sky bridges between buildings. Um, obvious benefits being, you know, you can connect people in cold climates or anywhere um, without having to go outside and connect buildings, create interesting spaces. But then there's also problems of ownership, you know, who, whose space is that skyway, mm. um, maybe drawing some activity away from the street. So how do you balance some of the potential uh, negatives of skyways with the potential benefits? None of the d existing designs for skybridge systems are, are perfect. There's some good things and bad things in each of them. Um, but they all have in common and share um, uh, a better vision for, for the future of the mega city. Um, I live in Hong Kong myself, um, close uh, and going to work in the morning. I can uh, pass by uh, a mega shopping mall, a mega podium building, uh, where there's no life left on the streets around it. and it actually isolates it, uh, the, the city of Hong Kong in, 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 in several parts. It isolates the city around it. And then after that, I walk through uh, central Hong Kong with this um, extensive uh, sky bridge system where uh, the urban tissue uh, is preserved, uh, has been preserved, and where it is still exciting to walk around on ground floor. There's uh, this porosity and there's shade, there's uh, life on ground floor, which we don't find uh, when, when when these giant podium buildings are landing in, uh, in, uh, in, in the hearts of uh, many Asian cities. So um, yes, in harsh climates, uh, when it's warm or cold, I think the Skybridge system obviously offers uh, an alternative to uh, the giant podiums. King Abdullah financial district that we have been working on um, is, uh, is based on this uh, Skybridge system. And it, it I think it allowed us to to implement a pedestrian uh, strategy for the whole uh, district of uh, three and a half uh, million square meters, where uh, people there can uh, walk to work or home uh, using the Skybridge system, or they can choose to uh, uh, walk on ground floor. Uh, and the ground floor has then, it, it, it allowed us to free uh, the cars away from the ground floor and implement a much higher quality for the, the public realm on ground floor which is uh, much more green and uh, much more uh, and a microclimate uh, there that, uh, that actually is cooler than the rest of the city. So we offer two uh, very different uh, possibilities with the Skybridge system in King Abdullah Financial District. So that's how you bring public space from the ground floor to the maybe second or third or connecting between buildings. Yeah. How about even higher? How about uh, projects that use atria in uh, the 50th floor observation decks up higher. Yeah. Obviously, that's a, a big draw sometimes. You can get a view. People want to come up to the higher floors of these tall buildings for obvious reasons. But of course, there's a financial incentive to make those spaces more private, right? To rent them out. Yeah. Um, so then they become less public. How do you think those interests should be balanced so that tall buildings have really public inclusive areas at height throughout? Well, I mean, there's many le levels of uh, what public space can be about. Um, if you talk about truly public space, such as uh, plaza or escape or uh, Park. uh, parks, yeah. and uh, if they if they really have to happen high up in uh, in, in 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 a tall building, I think uh, the the local governments needs to help the developers to uh, to implement it. I think it's very interesting in. In, in, in London, uh, for instance, where a developer of the, the, uh, the walkie-talkie project mm -hmm. um, got allowed to build a high r uh, tall building outside of the, 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 the tall building cluster of London uh, in exchange for implementing uh, free levels of uh, public park up there. Now, it's not necessarily um, working. Uh, the access to these levels is, is, is not as easy as it should be. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very interesting how uh, there can be a win-win situation in trading GFA or in trading uh, higher density in exchange for developers building um, public spaces at heights. Mm. Uh, I myself also try to, 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 to promote the idea of a truly public space high up in a building. Uh, and that's why we, uh, we proposed in Foshan here in, in China, we proposed, uh, we were doing an opera and a, and a, and a, and a museum. And we proposed to combine it with an observation tower uh, to, to the city and they, 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 they are bu they're building it and it is uh, actually a freely accessible observation decks uh, up there. 
that then becomes part of a, of a, a large building. Um, but that is a unique case. Uh, it, it cannot serve as a, <laughs> as a rule, but uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think we, we are trying uh, anywhere we can. I think in tall buildings, the public space, you can, you can maybe understand it in a broader level. Uh, I think social spaces, uh, whenever I work with tall buildings, and uh, now, I, now I do uh, some products uh, there, uh, I try to implement uh, shared spaces and mm -hmm. social spa spaces uh, at heights, even like in office towers. Like what? Well, I think, I think the, the, f the future of, uh, of workspace as such is changing. Uh, I think even towers, uh, will change the way they are designed, uh, influenced by uh, the way uh, workspace is, is gradually dissolving into a more uh, loose and less strict uh, work environment, like uh, more influenced by campus, uh, the campus feeling and uh, the campus, uh, the situation in, in, in Silicon Valley, how mm -hmm. this is influencing, I think, the way we look at workspace, even in tall buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we can, I think, Tall buildings will more and more uh, integrate uh, breakout spaces that are more and more generous, uh, shared uh, programs mm. at heights. Uh, we see that more and more coming, and it's a very exciting prospect for, for tall buildings. So not just floors you know, 56 through 59 are, are office space for mm -hmm. this company, and then 60 through 62 yeah. are office space for this company, and yeah. 63 is the cafeteria. Yeah. More like fluid, or how would it look? Well, I think... I think every project uh, will probably sure. be different. Uh, we are working with uh, with uh, with uh, sharing spaces uh, among uh, within one office, one tenant. It's true. Uh, sharing uh, among several tenants is possible too. You can see it in, uh, in Shanghai Tower, for instance, mm -hmm. where large uh, shared spaces are hanging in the in the sky, uh, and and that is uh, truly visionary. Uh, uh, so, so it will be different for, for every case, but, uh, but uh, it's definitely a trend as we see it. You mentioned uh, accessibility earlier, and that seems key because in some, I mean, in China, there's certainly a culture of, of going up from the ground floor mm -hmm. um, to, to find more retail or a restaurant, or I think it's just more in the, the architectural typology and in people's minds. In the U.S., I think people are less used to that, right? Mm -hmm. They don't expect there to be anything um, public above the third floor. Yeah. Um, how do you make public spaces that are higher up in these tall buildings accessible and, and make sure that everyone knows they're there and that they're being used uh, you know, for the public? Well, that would have uh, an influence on the architecture of these buildings, obviously. Uh, uh, some examples in Hong Kong are quite uh, interesting. These uh, vertical uh, retail uh, shopping malls that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that are almost like vertical boulevards going uh, going up with the cinema on top attracting uh, the crowds mm -hmm. and and um, express escalators uh, in the facade sometimes uh, that uh, mm -hmm. that signal uh, mm -hmm. that here is a point in the city where you can get up where there's space mm -hmm. uh, acting almost like uh, acupuncture in the mm -hmm. in the urban fabric of the city i think uh, i think uh, super dense cities like hong kong uh, can teach us uh, it's almost vernacular uh, typologies of, uh, of, of of public buildings that uh, that relief they offer relief to um, to to areas in the city that are too dense. Hmm.